Mac Chapter 2, Section 5, Processor Technology, by Matt Glover. Processors refer to the part of the computer that processes information, performs arithmetic calculations, and makes basic decisions based on information values. A microprocessor is a very advanced integrated circuit that houses millions of transistors within a single package. They have a lot of uses, and they're used in many... Um, household and electronic devices that we use today and are very advantageous to use in almost every part of the computer. Microprocessors are wrongly interchanged with CPUs very often. All CPUs are microprocessors but not all microprocessors are CPUs. Microprocessors are circuitry that surround the CPU yet the microprocessor encases other processors like the GPU, sound cards, and network cards. Primary and Secondary Storage Secondary storage is the storage medium that holds information until it is deleted or overwritten, regardless of the computer has power. An example of this would be a hard drive because you can save data or information to it and when you restart or shut it off, you can turn the computer back on and all your data will be there, available on the hard drive. Primary storage, on the other hand, is a storage medium for data that is in active use. When the computer doesn't have power, the data is gone. Examples of this include RAM or CPU. And then instructions or software is used by loaded by um, by loading from primary storage or secondary storage in order for the processor to execute it. The speed of the processor um, determines how fast the command can be executed. Keeping it cool, it is vital to keep the processor cool because if the heat that's produced is not controlled, then there will be CPU failures, and the lifespan of the CPU will drastically decrease. This would mean that you'd have to constantly be replacing the CPU much sooner if you decide to not cool it properly. So this should be um, a big priority to keep the CPU alive. Most desktops and laptops use a metal heat sink to dissipate heat with a fan on the top to draw air over the metal and improve the cooling. And this could be seen in the picture to the left. One of the best forms of cooling is liquid cooling. It is used in high-end computers to maintain low operation temperatures. Liquid cooling is definitely the best form, as I said before, and I'll go into it more in the next slide. Liquid cooling. Liquid cooling works by running water over each of the components, transferring heat from each part to a radiator that dissipates the heat and keeps the water cool. This method cools the user's processor, graphics card, and whatever other hardware more effectively. Some pros are that it's quieter than most air coolers, it achieves lower temperatures than the PC's stock fan, um, it keeps hardware core during heavy loads, like memory intensive programs like the Adobe uh, program suite, and it gives you a ton of headroom for overclocking the system, giving the most power possible out of the user's components. And then some disadvantages include the high cost and the complexity of it, like um, many users have a lot of trouble trying to implement it themselves. You can always buy kits, but many people have trouble trying to put this in themselves, so you should really look it up and be sure before you uh, try to do this process. Clock speed. Clock speed refers to the speed at which a processor executes instructions. It's measured in megahertz, gigahertz, and possibly in the future terahertz. And just to give a benchmark of where we're at right now, as of 2011, um, AMD has a Guinness World Record for recording a top frequency of 8.429 gigahertz using an overclocked FX8 core processor. And you can't really compare um, different processors' clock speeds because of the fact that different companies construct uh, processors that use different instructions that may take a different amount of clock cycles to complete. Changes in clock speed. Increasing the clock speed of a processor also increases the amount of heat it produces, so users should ensure that they don't increase the clock speed too much. And to the right we see a picture of a processor being overclocked. Overclocking can be a really dangerous process if you don't really know what you're doing, and it's not advised to begin with, but if the user knows how much of a limit they could push their processors to without damaging it with the proper cooling, it could be okay to do it. Speed throttling saves power and reduces heat output when the computer is idle. It is a technique by manufacturers to design processors with variable clock speeds, which reduce when the, com when the processor is under less load and increases when the processor is under heavy use. MIPS stands for millions of instructions per second and is another measure of processor performance. MIPS figures should also be used lightly because the numbers can be very misleading. Quick executing instructions will appear to have very high MIPS figures while real life applicable tasks, which we would use very often, will have much lower figures. Multi-core processors. 
Multi-core processor is an integrated circuit to which two or more processors have been attached for enhanced performance, reduced power consumption, and more efficient sim simultaneous processing of multiple tasks. The two processors are actually plugged into the same socket, so the connection between them is actually faster. In practice, performance games are said to be about 50%. A dual-core processor is likely to be about one and a half times as powerful as a single-core processor. Multi-core processors can work on the same task to get the job done quicker, and as such, dual-core, quad-core, and even eight-core processors are becoming more common. And as you can see in the picture to the left, this is a picture of an Intel quad-core processor. Motherboard. The motherboard is the circuit board that contains a computer's CPU and provides ports and connections for all other parts of the system. It has slots for RAM, connectors for hard disks, slots for attaching expansion cards like video cards or sound cards, and connectors for the mouse and keyboard. They are also equipped with extra ports and slots for future upgrades or expansions, but the components must be compatible with the motherboard to work. Many modern motherboards also have built-in video and sound capabilities, so they feature connections for monitors and speakers. The actual meaning of multitasking. A processor can only perform one instruction at a time. Whenever you are running multiple applications, the processor is actually switching between the tasks extremely quickly. To truly multitask, the user must have a multi-core system. The processor myth. It is not true that a dual-core processor will double the performance or a quad-core processor will quadruple it. Many tasks cannot be completed at the same time since parts must be completed before others are attempted, which leaves many cores to be doing nothing at all or leaving idle. And this adds to the fact that if you have more than one processor, that they'll all be doing something at once. Another issue is that many multi-core systems only have one area of RAM which is shared by all the cores. This means that each core must wait to access the RAM. And this can be fixed by having dedicated memory areas for each processor so that all of them can be working at the same time. And here are the sources and credits. Creator of introduction and closing videos and PowerPoint presentation is me and Matt Glover. And then under that are the uh, links that I use for the information presented in this PowerPoint.